Welcome back everyone to my Let's Play of Ogre Battle, March of the Black Queen. In our last episode, we were making a push toward the enemy base. On At the end of that uh, episode, last episode, I also talked a little bit about Saga 2, Final Fantasy Legend 2, that I did a Let's Play of. Um, I mentioned P there. P isn't actually a crab, uh, but I've always ke I kept him in a crab, uh, for the most part, uh, form during that playthrough, because he had a... His uh, face, he always looked like he was uh, kind of angry, so he had like a little crabby disposition, so... But he was actually a rat, just like uh, the other two, uh, or two of his uh, companions were in that, uh, Vincent and Linus. And then they had Honey Mouse, the mouse, who drove a big robot suit. So, it's complicated. <laughs> um, but um, another thing that's... Uh, we just got there was the pumpkin plus that is a promotion item so this unit is pretty good alignment so we are uh, led by a cleric so we weren't able to convince this uh, imp which is the lo lesser demon basically to join our party so oh well we already got one earlier so but uh that pumpkin plus is an item that we can use on another class of characters, pumpkin heads, which is exactly as it says on the tin. It's a human character with a pumpkin for a head. And uh, what the pumpkin head does is, whether the front or the back row, he kicks his head off, and if it makes a successful hit, it reduces whatever its, hit, its target's hit uh, points by half. An interesting thing about the pumpkin head is that uh, its attack is actually considered uh, white magic. So it can defeat uh, undead if uh, the pumpkin hits. So we just take care of these undead. We should get a level because all the undead here are level seven. Uh, but that pumpkin plus, you use it on the pumpkin head and it becomes a Halloween, which basically just gives us some better resistances and doubles its uh, attack. So it now has two pumpkins uh, attacks. Uh, from the front and the back row. And they actually make pretty good tanks. They actually have pretty good resistances uh, to most uh, elements and physical attacks. So, this should be an easy battle. Uh, we took out the ghosts already. Oh, we missed it by one. I probably should have put the uh, uh, tactics to weak. Probably would have done that extra uh, point of damage. But, oh well, we took care of it before he was able to finish, uh, do any more damage take his second turn. So, Boodunk. Let's just keep pushing our way forward here. And as our characters are pushing forward, Orpheus's unit is uh, pushing back here. He'll be liberating these cities in the back here before moving up to the north part of the map. Um, in the north part of the map, uh, um, one of these cities will let us know that there's some uh, cities along the sea coast there. Undead characters are skeletons and ghosts must be put to rest with a healing spell or other white magic. Set your tactics to anything besides strong. Clerics and others will then attack the undead. You can also fight them if you have white magic weapons, like that rune axe that we got uh, in Lake uh, Janinia. Other uh, white magic weapons include the Brunhild sword, which is required for the uh, best ending, the Zanzibar sword, uh, the Karenberg sword, the rune axe uh, that I mentioned, the Ku... Kusanagi Blade, the Pristine Sword, the Kukeya Rod, Dragon Claws, the Mystic Mace, and Liebel's Rod. Those are all uh, white magic weapons. Uh, white magic spells include your healing spells uh, that the clerics use, the Banish spell that uh, Orpheus has in the front row, and uh, that Angels and uh, Cherubim have. The Seraphim's laser spell, uh, the Sylph's missile spell, and uh, the pumpkins, uh, as I said earlier, the pumpkins, uh, pumpkin head attack counts as white magic. So those will all take care of uh, undead characters. So And then for cards, tarot cards, you can use your judgment cards uh, and then also the sun card. And both of those deal damage based on uh, how evil the target is. 
but the sun card actually hits every uh, character, so that can actually damage uh, your units, which is why I never really draw sun cards. If it gives me the option to take the sun card, I, I usually just toss it, because uh, while they could be good, they can deal a lot of damage to enemy units that are, you know, of very low alignment. Unless your characters are really high alignment, uh, it's going to damage them too, so... But we're not going to take any damage from this unit here because we took out this golem here. Uh, so this witch can uh, only ever hope to draw with us. And the only way it can draw with us is if it uh, stunned everybody and we won't be able to attack it at all. But as long as we get one attack and deal one point of damage to it, we're guaranteed to win this battle. Because the witch in the back row there can't uh, deal any damage to us. Now if the witch was in the front row, she'd have an attack called Slap. Which is just a weak physical attack. So, well, there's a tower card that actually can switch uh, tact, uh, rows of characters. If you get the moon card, uh, the moon card swaps rows. So, like, it, for instance, this uh, unit was a witch in the back row, a golem in the front row. Uh, if you had a moon card, you would uh, push the witch to the front row and the golem to the back row. So, uh, surprisingly, the boss of this, uh, the boss of this. Uh, Area uh, Capella, he's a mage. He's uh, one of the only. He's uh, I think the only boss in the game that you can actually use a moon card on and switch their rows. So uh, it's pretty interesting there. But uh, we just uh, updated our pal. Uh, uh, some of our fighters that are the knights. And let's see what happens here. Oh, a tower card. That's a useless kind of card. It uh, never damages anything that flies, and it deals, uh, it's like black magic, so. I heard that the program forest is full of ghosts, how scary, yep, ghosts and skeletons, so. But hey, those are good for raising uh, alignment and charisma, which we'll be doing eventually uh, later on, uh, so. And now just be, uh, if we have uh, some units, we're gonna try to get them to advance normally, but if we have some units that uh, may have uh, some issues that they need to uh, do a few extra battles, they might be short on charisma or alignment, we can come back here and farm those ghosts uh, and get raised alignment and charisma. So Let's fight this unit here. We fought this unit quite a few times, but it shouldn't be as effective because, like I said, it's in a uh, uh, low alignment group. And we're in the daytime here, so... This is doing a lot of good damage over to that wizard. I, unfortunately, I don't have my griffin there directly in the middle. You see he's slightly canted over to the right. So, uh, that exposes the wizard there in the back row. So, I'm gonna have to realign that unit. Uh, put the, uh... Griffin right in the middle. And then just for safety, I'll put the, uh... Wizard right behind him, so... And my reputation is looking pretty, pretty good and solid right now, so I can afford to uh, not necessarily liberate that town with a super high alignment unit. Uh, I'll, I'll just get that Griffin unit in that ta that city real quick to uh, heal up. So, and all these other units that have healed up, I will push them forward a little bit. And this unit here can block off this bridge here. You can see there's uh, five, six enemy units there. The boss of the cat unit there, uh, we saw uh, his uh, unit is available, but it's hidden behind one of these uh, wizard units. But his unit is going to be uh, Capella the Mage. I mentioned him in some of the video descriptions, and we'll learn about him through some more towns that we liberate. And he has three imps uh, in the front row, so he is a mage character, which is the advanced wizard. Uh, and uh, at level 10, uh, you can, if your wizard isn't too, too uh, evil, I think his alignment has to be between 20 and 40. Uh, I'll have to look up the exact numbers. Uh, but we don't have to worry about it until we uh, necessarily promote one of our wizards. Uh, but he becomes uh, like the doll mage, that he has one uh, hit all attack rather than having two single target attacks. But like the wizard, he's able to uh, hit four 
I mean five of the six uh, elements. He can do uh, acid, like the doll mage for physical, thunder for thunder, um, blizzard for ice, firewall for fire, and phantom for the uh, black magic. So he trades. I remember the night 25 years ago when the castle of Zenobia fell to the Empire's forces. The few survivors of the battle ran into this forest pursued by the Empire. They knew that they couldn't fight anymore and were prepared to surrender. But their disgusting Imperial army ignored their surrender and set the forest on fire. The enforced fire went up in flames and in one night was leveled, along with the people in it. Ever since then, this place has been called the Pogrom Forest. So, hmm. That's not good. So that accounts for all the restless undead that uh, we've been uh, fighting. Those are just the undead from that massacre uh, 25 years ago. So 25 years ago, like that person said, was when uh, Zenobia fell. We learned a little bit about in the prologue uh, in the first episode. That is when uh, Major Shidi uh, allied himself with the Highlands and the Highlands invaded and basically took over the entire uh, continent. So, the other four kingdoms. Nope, we missed that, taking out that guy by one hit point. Oh, there we go. We have our knights. Knights just have a little bit of better uh, stat growths than the fighters, but they still uh, basically uh, are like just fighters. Uh, they'll have two physical attacks in the front row, and then um, one physical attack in the back row, so you want to keep them obviously in the front row. So they're one half of the good alignment uh, progression that your that your male characters can make. Uh, or I should say maybe good alignment physical attackers. The other one is the samurai, which you can make at uh, level seven. So we'll turn some of our knights then into uh, samurai, but you might as well get the better growths uh, from levels uh, 5 and 6 uh, in, in the knight class, uh, and then just keep them as a fighter. So. And then, of course, the two uh, evil physical attacking units are ninjas and wild men, and uh, your neutral uh, physical attack is the beast man, and your uh, neutral... Uh, to good, uh, neutral to good, uh, magic to ink is the doll mage, and then the evil is obviously the wizard, so. Oh, take care of the undead there. That should, uh, pump up that, uh, last fighter, give him this final level up there. We can make him a knight then, too. Donk. So, yeah, we should be able to turn him into a knight here. And we'll heal him up though, because but that unit shouldn't see too too much combat because we've already advanced everybody in that unit, so we want to try to get all our uh, his charisma and alignment is so high that he can't turn into any of the neutrals, uh, the doll mage or the beast man. So he's locked to the the knight class. So of course we can manipulate his alignment. Uh, we can have him maybe fight weaker enemies. Uh, which is something we could do uh, in uh, one of the good ways to do that later on is uh, in the second uh, area of the Sh uh, Sharm district where we fought Usar. Uh, there's dragons in the mountains that are level one. And uh, so if you defeat them with a higher level class, you'll take uh, an alignment uh, penalty. So that's one way we can lower his alignment if we wanted to change him into like an evil character. But and that's good, like I said, for your wizards, because if they want to promote to a mage, their alignment can't be too, too high, huh? but it can't be too, too low either. Uh, so. Alright, let's just keep uh, attacking these characters here. Make sure we have, uh, I'm pretty sure I already had that unit moving to this city, but better safe than sorry, so. And that other Mickey's unit is already kind of healed up pretty nicely there, Rexan full and uh, we'll be keeping most of our units uh, even though a lot of them won't be necessarily doing any more fighting uh, we'll still keep them out here because we should be able to finish this uh, we'll be able to finish this ma map off before another uh, day uh, another day happens so 
know you sending units back to to the ta to the thing. We're not that strapped for gold, especially since we're not buying items. So now, if you were like uh, buying items and we're really having tight managing your money, if you knew that you had a unit that you weren't gonna have fight anymore, you can send them back to the home unit, back to the uh, unit base, and then once they touch that base, you're given the option to return that unit to base, and then that way you won't be charged uh, for them doing the uh, tribute at the beginning of each day. So it's one way to, to save money. Oh, make another beast man here. So we'll be growing, uh, like I said, for now we'll just Eventually, we'll be getting rid of a lot of these characters. Uh, we'll get, but like I said, stack quotes, uh, I may not have mentioned this earlier, but stack quotes are kind of like random in a sense. Uh, your character, like I said, for instance, like uh, your knight might gain between uh, three and five strength uh, at a level up. So sometimes your knight might get three, other times you might get lucky and get five. Uh, your beast men might have four to six strength, so sometimes you might be lucky, get six. Other times you might be unlucky and get uh, just a low four. So if you have a whole bunch of uh, units in the same class, eventually what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to, you know, uh, you know, choose whoever grew the best and then get rid of the weaker ones. And that's what I'll be doing much later on to just manage the size of my army. Uh, at most, you can have uh, 100 units uh, in your army, and uh, you can deploy up to 10 units uh, at a time per per map. So, yeah, the enemy uh, cheats a little bit. Like I said, this uh, this uh, enemy this map has 26 uh, enemy units that leave the base, and then of course the 27th is the boss. Uh, but we can't have that, so we can only have. 10 deployable units at a time, so. But. We'll just be, you know, filtering our army out eventually as we get more characters. And. Because usually each special character, like, um, like how, uh, Canopus and Gilbert, we don't just recruit them solo. Uh, they'll come with, uh, their own little characters. So. They'll uh, we'll have to make room for for those uh, characters as our army grows. So now I think, of course, if you don't, uh, uh, if you just recruit all the special characters uh, and have your own characters, you still I think you have uh, it's 96 units total that you'll end up getting, uh, but. It's very close to the to the limit. You won't be able to basically afford to recruit any neutral characters. And there's some units that we can only get uh, through recruiting uh, either uh, neutral characters or uh, by uh, hiring from towns. So that's something I haven't done yet. Uh, but each uh, unit that it can be a leader uh, when you're in a city, uh, doesn't matter what city it is, uh, can hire uh, certain uh, characters. So, for uh, instance, uh, like your cleric can hire Amazons. Uh, your uh, wizard can hire just fighters. Uh, and uh, so forth and so on. So, beastmen can require, can uh, hire uh, certain uh, beasts. I think they can uh, hire the hellhounds and uh, maybe uh, maybe griffins. Um, I don't know the exact, all the uh, hires right off the top of my head here. I didn't know that I'd be talking about it. Uh, so, But I'll look that up for a future episode. I'll let everyone know what uh, each... Uh, oh, I can actually just link it in the video description here. What each... Uh, unit can uh, hire, so. But Alex is now level 5, so is Adam, so we can change some characters here, promote them. Get some more knights. And some of these knights will eventually become samurais. Now, uh, 
Samurais have two attacks on the front row, but they have that targeted uh, Inanuki uh, physical attack from the back row. So it's a little better than Knights in that sense. Uh, they're a little cheaper uh, than Knights initially as well. Uh, but then as they advance in level, uh, they get a little bit more expensive, so... But they start cheaper, but they end up getting more expensive, so... But... And for the most part, Knights and Samurais are somewhat interchangeable. Uh, their resistance is very, very similar. Uh, their stat growth is very, very similar. It's just like I said, the main difference is the, uh, their back row attack. The samurai can uh, can target a unit with their uh, back row attack, and the uh, knight cannot. And then when the knight advances to its uh, next class, the paladin, and then it can uh, it turns from its uh, back row attack from a, a back row attack to a healing attack like the cleric, but it's a weak heal because uh, knights have low intelligence growth because they're a physical type uh, attacking unit so they'll never be as good of a healer as uh, a cleric the base cleric because one the cleric has two healing attack two heal two heals then the paladin only have one but the next uh, advancement is uh, for the cleric will be the uh, shaman which gets three heals from the back row and then uh, from the uh, the next advanced is the monk, which does a two heal all attack, two heal alls to your, I was gonna say attack, but it's not really an attack. Although speaking of attacks, uh, I forgot to mention uh, another white magic attack is from the front row. If you have the uh, from the front row, uh, the onk attack that the um, clerics use uh, is. Uh, is a whatchamacallit, is a uh, magic attack. So if you have a cleric in the front row, uh, they'll attack with their onk, they'll shoot like a little onk symbol out, and that'll take care of uh, undead. So it'd be nice if our cleric hit, because then we should be able to, oh, we missed, though. Wow, that was terrible. That would have been a nice, good experience for all our characters there, so. Well, in case we run into another uh, thing, we'll put Orpheus in the front row there, uh, because he has the Banish. So that's, I guess, one good advantage of having a, a, a high alignment uh, unit leader to start off with. If you are going to be farming undead, you can uh, just farm directly with the leader without giving them a white magic weapon, because their uh, Banish spell counts as a, a white magic attack. So, so we're just going to kind of... All our characters are healed up, so we're just going to kind of surround the enemy unit here, the enemy boss. That way we can just charge him all at once with a whole bunch of different units. So, he said if you have a moon card, we can use it on this boss and we can push him to the front row. And, uh, because right now he's protected by three imps. Uh, so he's actually one of the, he's actually our first boss that, uh, can't be uh, uh, damaged right away. So, Gilbert was in the back row too, but we could damage him right away because everybody else was in the back row with him. But other previous bosses, uh, Warren, he was back row, but he had nobody blocking for him. Uh, Usar was in the front row. Uh, and then uh, Sirius was in the front row too. So, this leader's actually smart and he hangs out in the back row. But we just got a full card here, so that'll take care of uh, his front row. To defeat undead monsters, use this white magic staff. We got the mystic staff. So the mystic mace. So, in, in some translations. We have another hidden city over here. And we'll grab it. And that hidden city will be uh, kind of important. So, it's going back into night here. So, now this... Uh, Capella is, of course, an evil magician. We already figured that out because, like they said, he was drawing circles and magic symbols in the in the forest and uh, summoning demons out of them. So, yeah, not a good guy. So we're gonna fight better in the day in the nighttime. So, 
We don't want to fight him during the night. You want to pull a card? Yes. Hmm, got another hero friend card. Putting enemies to sleep. Good thing about the rule of the Pogrom Forest, Capella spent several years studying under the mage Rashidi. Rashidi apparently had three students, and Capella was one. You see that Capella is taking the souls in the forest and using them to make deals with demons. So I guess that explains why there's some loose demons running around in the mountains, and why several of his units uh, that he sent after us had imps, like lesser demons in them, and uh, his own unit has uh, demons in them, so... Let's go back and remove these characters. Remember, if you remove a unit leader, then the entire unit is disbanded. And we'll, of course, want to rearrange our army uh, in our next, uh, for our, before our next campaign. Let's check and see if any of these characters have any uh, items on them. Because uh, we can take out their, take off their weapon, and then we can equip it to whatever unit decides to attack the boss. So, because if you're in the back row here, or you're just sitting on the bench, hanging out in the, uh, in our uh, army's base, there's no need for you to have the weapon. So, eventually, though, we'll eventually hopefully get enough weapons that you know you end up you won't have to rotate. But early in the game like this, it just helps a little bit to rotate your weapons around. So. He has a good strong sword, the Ogre Sword. Relic Sword, so this might be a good unit to have fight the boss. He only has a lot of different uh, weapons equipped. Now, uh, Capella is a mage, he's only going to have one hit, uh, one attack, one hit all magic, so uh, it's more important that we have weapons equipped than physical defensive or. We got another fool card. We'll be using one of them, of course, because what the fool card does, uh, I'll explain as soon as I get through this thing. The peaceful sea to the to the north of the Pogrom Forest is the Castellian Sea. There should be several seas along the Castellation coast. Yeah. But uh, anyway, uh, what the fool card does is it makes all the units that aren't the boss fl uh, flee. So it's really good against uh, enemy boss units like Capella's here because we're able to make all the uh, those imps that are guarding him just leave, and then that he'll be just wide open to attack. So once again, remember he'll fight better at night because he's low alignment, and our characters will fight worse because most of our characters are somewhat good alignment. So we're gonna wait until it's more advantageous for us to fight in the daytime. He'll take more damage, our character, and our characters will do more damage, and uh, we'll also uh, take less damage, because he'll be dealing less damage. So you've made it through the Pogrom Forest, well, well. However, you will get no further, because I will stop you. I will send you to the underworld with the great powers given to me by the great mage Rashidi. And here we go, let's use that fool card and we can get rid of all these imps. Donk. And once we survive his attack, then we can probably turn our, put our targets onto uh, weak, so we can do a little bit of extra damage. So we'll keep it on strong though until he attacks us, just to be safe. So yeah, we use the firewall, hit everybody, and then like I said, we can turn it to weak if we want. Do a little bit of extra damage. So, but oh, because he can't hit us anymore, because he only has that one attack as a mage. So. You also notice that whenever you uh, fight a boss, the animations automatically turn on. So that's one way we'll see a lot of the different animations here. And ooh, Capella fell. We get another level up. And we have freed the Pogrom Forest. Woohoo! About time. This is a long, uh, long little map here. So we will be coming back to it though, like all the other maps, to get some uh, extra uh, plot. We're also going to get an important item in one of the cities up to the north there, uh, which is only available if you have a high enough reputation. If you have a low enough reputation, you get a different item. But I'll talk about that when we do our, our visit back to this area, so. But that's our fifth little uh, scenario taken care of. We have uh, still the same two that we were able to uh, advance to earlier. 
So we have Slums of Zenobia and Deneb's Garden. So we're going to Deneb's Garden next time. Take care. Have a good day. Bye.